what leads to effective ministry because when we talk about ministry of Jesus uh, we all follow what Jesus did there is what Jesus did in the ministry that made his ministry to be very much successful and uh, we want to see some of the things we need to apply in our ministry so that we can be effective according to the word of God I know I'm talking to the servants of God that are listening to me are uh, the people that God has ordained and given them responsibility to stand and do the work of God in his vineyard this is Bishop Bernard Isambe Dingili I love you so much with the love of Jesus and may God bless you. I want to read the word of God from the book of Matthew chapter number 22. Matthew chapter 22. The Bible says uh, from Matthew chapter 22 verse number 36, 37 and number 39. The Bible says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Verse number 39, the Bible says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That is Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through verse number 39. Uh, effective ministry, it is something that God is yearning to see all the ministers called by his name really walking into that particular grace it is also my desire as a man of god as the servant in the vineyard of god that i may also be very profitable to the body of christ the bible says here when jesus was teaching the disciples they came up with a question then they asked him uh, what uh, the greatest commandment in the law then Jesus told them, Thou shalt love thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Then he added in verse number 39 that you must love also your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, number one uh, thing that will make your ministry to be effective, it is the love, the love. In this particular place, the love is segmented into two the love towards God and the Bible is very clear it is also giving us a definition on how we need to release our love towards God the Bible says we must love God with all our heart all of us we understand that God does not move by anything else in our lives God's eyes focus on the heart of human being if the heart of human being pleases God then God will begin to do something with that particular person. God is very much interested with our heart. Our heart is very important. That's why the Bible says, you must guard your heart than anything else you are guarding here on earth. So if you can guard your heart and make sure that whatever that enters your heart, it is profitable to the kingdom. I want to assure you that your life in Christianity and also your life in God's vineyard, it will be profitable. Because also the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the heart is something that is very important. If I love God with my heart, if I love God with my heart, that is what is going to change my life, change my ministry, change my family, and change everything that I do. I want to encourage somebody tonight that you must take this initiative and begin to love God with your heart. In other words, the abundance of your heart, let it not be the things of the world, but the abundance of your heart, let it be the word of God. Number two, you love God with your soul. All of us, we understand when God created the first man, Adam, the Bible says in the garden of when God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says he breathed into Adam and Adam became a living soul. And God desires to have a fellowship with our soul. If my soul is in fellowship with God, it means that I love God. You cannot fellowship with somebody you don't love. So if you love God, your soul 
will be connected to God. I know you've learned something concerning what we call soul tie. Soul tie, it is when somebody who has engaged into something that is not good, for example, immorality, fornication, the Bible says when you engage yourself into that, there is what we call a soul tie that brings you two together. That's why the Bible says that, uh, do you not know that anyone that has an, an affair with a halot becomes one with an halot? That is what we call the soul tie, the soul connection. But when it comes to God, if you love God with your soul, you will fall into a connection with God. And that is the connection the devil does not want you to have. So the Bible says you must love your God with all thy soul. You must sell your soul into Christ. Do not put it into the demonic forces, into another source. But I pray for you. This is what we shall do in order for us to go to the next level. So we must love God with all our heart. Love God with all our souls. Then number three, you must love God with all thy mind. You know, the place where the devil plays with human being, the battleground of any human being between the devil and human being, it takes place between your mind. Because the Bible says, let every thought be made subject under the word of God. If you want to defeat such force that the devil brings into your life to cause you to lose your mind and connect yourself to something that will cause you not to be in a position to be with God. Now the Bible says that you must allow everything that comes into your mind, let it be subjected under the word of God. In other words, you must put your mind in under the power of meditation. You meditate on the word of God to make sure that you shut that gate the gate that can allow the devil to enter into your life. He can enter through your heart. He can enter through your soul. He can enter through your mind. If those places have fully been given to God, that is the beginning of your great life. I want to encourage you tonight. You are still victorious. You are still very powerful. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you must love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is very important. So love is one of the things that makes your ministry to be effective. I pray for any minister that is listening to me. Ministers in praise and worship, ministers in the word, ministers in teaching, whatever you are doing in the divine assignment, even the ushers in the house of God, we need to love. Love is the greatest key that will enable your ministry to become effective. When I talk about effectiveness, I'm talking about the, in, the, 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 the tangible result that people will see and feel when you're ministering. That is what you need to understand. The devil knows that if you love the people, people will feel what you are giving to them. That's why when God wanted to reach out to humanity, you and I, God never came with something to disturb with disturb the humanity he never came with harshness he never came with warfare the bible says in john chapter 3 verse number 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life it is very important if jesus christ began his ministry with love i as his follower I must also, also copy the same and paste it into my divine assignment because I am not preaching on my own. I have not come to you on my own, but Christ has sent me. You have been sent by the Lord. And therefore, we are just but ambassadors. Ambassadors are the representative of those that have sent them into a particular place. Jesus said, Go ye therefore into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature, teaching them to observe all that I have taught you. And therefore, love is the key that will make people 
to come to God. Love can overturn what the devil is planning against humanity. If God can love and turn the entire world back to him, if you and I decide to love people of God, we shall turn many to the Lord. I want to pray with somebody that may God give you the grace to love the people. In verse number 39, the Bible says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The way anybody loves himself or herself, that is the very, very definition of love that must also be transmitted to others. So if you transmit the same love that you desire to be loved with, that is what we call loving your neighbor as you love yourself. We all are called to a total love. We've been called to a total love of God and our neighbors. That is the greatest calling. The greatest calling is not preaching, is not singing, is not worshiping, it is not intercessory, it is not apostolic, it is not evangelism. But if you've not received the greatest call, the call to love the people of God, we can fail in other callings. That other calling are effective. Evangelism needs love. A preacher needs love. An apostle needs love. A prophet needs love. People will see Christ in the magnificent, in what they see in you, functioning according to what Jesus gave to us. Another thing that you need to understand, love can take you to all places. The love can take you to all places. Love can take you to places you've never been to because love is also the key that opens door for anyone that operates in love. Therefore, if I decide to operate in hatred, hatred has ability to block some doors for you. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus as a man of God, as a woman of God, wherever you are, love of God in you it will open great doors for you in the year 2023. I pray that God may pursue this word and help his people that we may walk in love. Because limitation is caused by hatred. We have some of us, we cannot go to a certain place because we feel like there are people in that place that we don't love. We have people in that place that we don't uh, negotiate with, associate with. And therefore, we must be very, very clear on this, that the love of God can take a man or a woman into a particular level that you've never been to. I pray for you this night that the love of God will take you and take your ministry to the next level. Loving Jesus is accepting all that Jesus went through. So I must love Jesus. But remember, if I love Jesus, I have not loved Jesus only performing uh, miracles of changing water into wine or multiplying fish and bread. I must also understand Jesus was persecuted. Jesus also was rejected. Jesus was opposed. So I must also understand after I have decided to love Jesus, I must also be prepared enough to go through what Jesus went through. So when I'm going through what Jesus went through, it means I am in the line with my Christ Jesus. And therefore, this is what you need to understand as a child of God. Loving Jesus is also another way of saying that I have accepted what my Lord went through. I have accepted what Jesus went through. And this will help you to understand ministry to a better place. In Matthew chapter 16, verse number 24, the Bible says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let him deny himself. The denial of myself, it is giving Jesus the center point in my life. I pray for somebody tonight. We shall not only follow Jesus, but we shall take Jesus to be the central place in our lives. Jesus will become the first thing, the first priority in your life. When Jesus becomes your first priority, 
In other words, you are fulfilling what the Matthew chapter 6 verse number 33 says. That seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. When I find Jesus, that is when I can be in a position to receive what is brought by the kingdom of heaven. If you love Jesus, then you have, you have to keep his commandments. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 14 verse 15, If you love me, then keep my commandments. When I talk about the commandments, we go back to where I read in the book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 36. When the disciple asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love God with all your heart. Love God with all your soul. Love God with all your mind. And also love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is the greatest commandment. If I love Jesus, if I love God, I will keep his commandments forever. One of these major commandments is divided into two. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God with all your heart, all your spirit, all your mind, and all your soul. That is the greatest commandment. Number two, what shall make your ministry effective? What shall make your ministry effective? I know this one, it will help you as a man of God, as a woman of God, as young preacher that are coming up. I know God is raising great generation in our time. And we honor the grace, we honor the anointing upon the people of God. He's raising great worshipers, raising great ministers, great apostles, great evangelists, teachers of the word, and even pastors are uh, being raised and the prophets of God. I pray that number two thing that will lead your ministry to be effective, it is what we call compassion. Compassion is very important. Compassion is very important because true love for God and uh, our fellow man, neighbor, it takes us uh, to the cross. If you love God and you love your fellow neighbor, it takes you to the cross. In other words, you die to self. Somebody that has died to self, he cannot take himself to be number one, self rushes selfishness in whatever you are doing you will always consider others if you consider others it means you have the compassion what is compassion compassion is ability of seeing the need in your brother or your sister and you don't only stop there but you act on it to bring solution i pray for you your ministry will grow because of the compassion that is in you there is something that you need to understand here. This brings new life which is manifested in compassion according to Matthew chapter 9 verse number 35 through 38. This is the story of Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw the needs of the people, when Jesus saw the needs of the people uh, during his time in ministry here in this world, uh, the minister uh, that was the ministry that was in Christ he saw the needs of the people the Bible says when Jesus saw the needs on the people the Bible says that he showed them the compassion it is very important for every minister to have the compassion the compassion will change the dimension of your ministry compassion will change what you're doing in your ministry compassion is simply means seeing the needs in others and also acting upon them i pray for you in whatever you are doing in the ministry may the lord give you the compassionate heart so that you can help the people that are suffering it is until you see the problem in your people it is until you see the problem in the people that god has entrusted to you because the bible says in the book of jeremiah chapter 3 verse number 15 he says i shall give you pastors according to my heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding so god gives you ability to see the needs of the people now what will help you to act on the needs it is what we call the compassion the compassion is the speed that will help you to reach out to the people of god and therefore in luke chapter number 10 verse 25 to 37 the good samaritan 
uh, manifests what we call, he is manifesting what we call the compassion. The compassion. We see when the man fall on the way, this man was bleeding because he was beaten thoroughly with the thieves and robbers. And this man was in the need of help. And when the Levites were passing by, they saw the man travailing in pain and full of blood was all over the body. But because of the attire that they they'd put on, it was a white garment that they were ready to enter into a service. But the Bible says they looked unto their garment and they said uh, there is no need for us to go and engage to this man because he will just smear some blood on our garment. So they believed the white garment shows that you are holy before God. But there is something that you need to understand. They forgot if your heart is so clear towards God. That is what God is looking at. When God wanted to ordain David in the house of Jesse, the Bible says, and he told the man of God, as Samuel, his servant, he said to Samuel, I don't see as the men see. My, 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 my focus is not on the outside appearance of man, but my eyes goes directly to the heart. This is something that we need to learn, ladies and gentlemen. The definition of a man is not by the type of attire is putting on. It is not by how many cars do you have. It is not by how many houses do you have. It is not by which office are you working in. It is determined by what we call the power that operates in your heart. If your heart is ready to bow and do something to the kingdom of God, that is what God is looking at. God is not looking at the outside things. He's not looking at the money you have. It's not looking at the possession you have. After all, Jesus and God possess everything in this world. We are just but stewards in the vineyard of God. And therefore, when we talk about money, the Bible says in Haggai chapter 2 verse number 8, He is the Lord of silver and money. A silver and gold belongs to God. Therefore, if silver and gold belongs to God, it means that he has power to control all the financial power. Therefore, there is nothing God is looking upon humanity if it is not the heart of humanity. So prepare your heart to be focused. Love the people. Love God. And God will use you to do greater things. The Samaritan focused on the compassion. The compassion moved the Samaritan. The Samaritan, the good Samaritan was moved by the heart that was with full of compassion. In that picture, the Samaritan represent the heart of Jesus. Jesus Christ, he saw me, he saw you travailing in pain when you were in sinful nature. And Jesus never ran away from you. He loved you even when you are still a sinner. That is the heart God is looking for. We must also release the same heart, transmit the same heart to the people. We must love the sinners because we were once in that particular shoe. Therefore, don't hurt the sinners. Don't hurt the drunkards. Don't hurt the prostitutes. This is a time God wants us to go for them. We love them. We bring them back. I have seen God delivering many people. I have seen prostitutes coming to the altar, delivered by God, coming back to worship the Lord. And they have known today as greatest worshipers. Nobody in this world has been destroyed completely. So long as somebody is still making some moves and talking and doing some movement because of the health and the life that is in him or her, God can still change the life of an individual. I believe tonight God has power to change the life of anybody. It doesn't matter what you have committed against God. It doesn't matter what you have said against God. But God has power to change your life. He can change your life. But understand the compassion in the ministers of the gospel. The compassion in worshippers. Compassion in bishops and pastors. This will make many people to come to the Lord. I pray that our ministry, which is the ministry of Jesus, will be effective here on earth. As we are leading that particular position God has given to you, I pray for you. It will not be a dormant position. May the Lord use you to heal many, to deliver many, and to bring 
hope to many that are getting lost. Love them and show them that Jesus still loves them in the name of Jesus. Number three, what will make your ministry to be effective? Number three is what we call understanding. It is very important to understand. The moment you understand those people that you are ministering to, you will be able to apply your ministry to them. Which ministry do you need to apply to them? You must apply your love to them. You must apply your compassion to them. That is what you need to understand. Apply your understanding to them. Apply your responsibility to them. And they shall feel the power of God. I pray for you. You shall not only carry the title. The title cannot be effective without the love of God. If you have the love of God, this is what is going to change the lives of believers. This is going to change the lives of those that are getting lost. It is time. We are not going to point fingers as judges. We are not judges. God has only sent us to bring them back. And we are not forcing anyone to get saved. We are not forcing anyone to receive Jesus by force. But if we love the people and show them the compassion, they shall see Jesus in us. I pray that everyone that has been called into the dimension of ministry, may God give you the grace to walk into the love and walk into the power of compassion. And also number three, you must be understanding person. Many people are hurt and they fall because they never found anybody who could understand their situation. We have losing a lot of people from the dimension of the following Jesus. And many people are falling away. They are running away from the church. They want to run into the world. They feel like the world is better than to be in the church. Because the church is losing the power that Jesus gave to us. The only debt we owe the people of God all over the world is the love of Jesus. If we can decide today to love the people of God and reach out to them, warn them of their sins because if somebody loves you, he will warn you when you are going wrong. He will tell you don't take this direction. You'll get lost. That is a man or a woman of God who loves you. Never be comfortable to be comforted when you are still committing sin. Sin has power to sting you and to put you to nothing. But if you have a man of God, you have a woman of God who can remind you that you must follow Jesus, then you are sitting under very good grace and anointing of God. I pray for you that we may understand the situation of our people, the problem that they are facing in order to bring solution to them. I pray that every man of God Every minister that is listening to me and every person that is listening to me, we shall connect and reach out to the people of God this year as we win them back to the kingdom of God. Understand the people you minister to. It will help us well to minister to them. I must know the type of people that I'm also ministering to. After knowing them, I need to pray God that I may understand the type of the people I am dealing with. If I know the type of people I'm dealing with, it will enable me to minister well to them. Another thing that you need to understand, it takes time and patience to understand your people. It takes time. It means all ministers must be also humble. They must be gentle. They must be patient with the people. Allow them. Give an allowance even to the people you say these are not going to heaven. Let me tell you the truth. There is nothing that can hinder anyone to go to heaven. If somebody can turn back to Jesus and repent of their sins, they can as well go back into the hands of Jesus. I pray for somebody here. There is no one who can despise you. No matter where you are today, even though you are a drunkard, even though you are a prostitute, yes, they know. Even though you are just somebody who does not understand God, you are just moving around abusing people, shooting people, stealing from people. I want to assure you, there comes a time you will come back to your senses 
and God will forgive you and he will call you my son, my daughter. If God can say, I have never seen a man like David and he fornicated yesterday, he killed yesterday, this is a mighty God. I want to tell somebody, I want to encourage somebody, we are serving a mighty God who does not judge you with yesterday. He knows what you did yesterday but is waiting for your direction you take today. The day of salvation is now. Is today. The hour is now. If you want to receive Jesus and if you want to come back, your story can change. I have met with people that God has changed their lives. They have come back to their senses. They say, oh man of God, I wish I could have known. I could have received Jesus earlier because look, I have com accomplished this in my family. I was not even able to provide for my family. But today I am able to provide for my family. Now my kids are also in university. Man of God, I wish the time I lost, I could have been received Jesus earlier. But let me tell you, God is not late. God will never come early. The time of God is the best. If you can make a decision today, this is your day. If you can make your decision today, this hour, this is the time God has put for you to change. And I'm sure your life can change. If you receive Jesus and you change from every negative ethnicity that you've ever done against God, God will call you my son, my daughter, because he has no grudges with God, with the man that receives him. He has no grudges with his own people. The Lord loves everyone. Therefore, in Matthew chapter number 13, verse number 23, the fruitful ground is that which understand the word of God. When Jesus was talking about the parable of the sower who planted the seed, and he talks about the ground that was very fertile to receive the seed, and the seed grew to produce something great. This is not just the ground we know. Jesus was talking about the people that are ready to understand the word. If you understand the word, you become the fertile ground. That is a place where multiplicity and addition will take place. I pray for you by the mercies of God. You whom people called dry. You whom people called that you have nothing to hold in your hands. After receiving Jesus, the Lord is going to change your story. There is God in heaven who can change and turn around everything in your life because of what you do this particular day. The decision determines whom you become in the life. If I decide to go into the world and commit sin, that is the decision that will shape the type of man, the type of person that I will be tomorrow. If I decide today, I'd rather be in the Lord, I'd rather receive Jesus, that is the type of a person that you will become tomorrow. You shall raise a generation that will fill the earth with grace, anointing, power, authority. And that is what God desires. That's why the Bible says uh, every secret things that are hidden, that they, they belong to God. But if God reveals, it reveals, it is revealed to you and your children. I pray your salvation today your move, your ministry, the effectiveness in your ministry, it is also for the purpose of your generation to come. Therefore, the good Samaritan in Luke chapter number 10 verse number 34, the good Samaritan understood the need of that man. The good Samaritan understood the need of that man that had fallen along the way after being beaten by robbers. He knew, one, this man need first aid. That is understanding what he needed. Number two, he knew after the first aid, I must also look for a way to transport him to the hospital. And after all, he took what we call the time of initiative to pay for his hospital bill. That is a man who understands. And this particular heart will grow your ministry. And finally, what will grow your ministry is what we call taking responsibility. Most of the people, we are not ready to take responsibility responsibility is what will build your ministry there are people that are really seeing you as a man as a father as a as, as somebody who is having a cover over them and also wherever you are as a woman of god 
if you are born again in that company where you are also working we have people that are seeing you as a woman of God they see you as a man of God in as much you are in a particular church under a particular pastor but also you can also become a man of God or a woman of God in that particular company because of what you carry if I carry Jesus I cannot hide Jesus people who carry Jesus with faithfulness even before they say they are born again people will tell them I think you are a pastor and you look like somebody that is born again because of your speech because of what you are doing on the ground your responsibility it can also reveal the type of person that you are therefore even the time came when Peter denied Jesus the time came when he stood up and walked even the people looked at him and they said and he's walking like Jesus you speak like Jesus because when you carry somebody when you carry Jesus in your heart the reflect will be Jesus because we are not on Jesus we are in Jesus because I am in Jesus it means Jesus will be seen by men before they see me therefore I want to assure somebody let us carry Jesus to nations let us carry Jesus to others that's why the Bible says that we are highly surrounded by such a huge multitude of weakness anything that we are doing they will know we have gone against the will of God because when you carry Jesus you are surrounded by such a huge multitude of weakness therefore if they see you they shall magnify God I declare to somebody here people will see you and they shall begin to magnify God they shall worship God because of what you carry and I want to assure you what you carry can open a closed door for you if you I carry Jesus a door will open for me I was teaching people today and I said when Jesus was entering Jerusalem he the, the, the women they, they, they put their clothes on the road and they wanted Jesus to walk on it but the donkey that carried Jesus it is the one that walked on what this woman put on the road towards Jerusalem why I want to declare to you this night whatever you are carrying tonight if I carry Jesus the honor that Jesus could have been given I will be receiving that honor because I am carrying him where Jesus could have entered the gates will be opened for you because of what you carry I pray for you tomorrow as you enter into that company may you carry Jesus as you enter there they shall not take you as an ordinary man you will never be taken as an, a man that is ignored you will never be ignored you never be taken as an ordinary man but you should be expected man that is carrying Jesus a man carrying Jesus is having the power equal to what Jesus have that's why Jesus said those who believe in me they shall do greater things than this listen to that Jesus never said they shall do equal things like this they, he said they shall do greater things than this I pray for you in the masses of God you shall do greater things in your ministry because of taking responsibility effective ministry one must take responsibility that is number one effective ministry I as a minister I as personally a minister to these people I must be ready to take responsibility number two the good Samaritan took responsibility of the man that he was helping he took responsibility somebody must want to know which type of responsibility was this to be responsible means when you see the need you act on it the problem we have we want to pray for every need let us learn something here ladies and gentlemen not every need needs prayer there are needs that you can see somebody for example he doesn't have food and you have three packets of unga in your house you have three packets of sugar in your house you don't need to send prayer to this man you don't need to send prayers look at your neighbor tell your neighbor don't send prayer where prayer is not needed Jesus gave us keys of the kingdom and he said I've given you the keys of the kingdom prayer is one of the keys giving is one of the keys forgiveness is one of the keys so we've been given the keys so if this keys I am using a wrong key to a wrong padlock then something is wrong somewhere I will not open the door therefore one thing you need to understand children of God ladies and gentlemen if somebody is hungry you don't need to declare Pentecostal prayer to that person he doesn't need Pentecostal prayer he needs some help 
The Bible says, in, uh, if you see your brother in need and you ignore that particular need, therefore what will happen? You will also be ignored by God when you are in the time of the need. So sometimes God blesses people to become a blessing. That's why the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy 28, he says, I will bless you until you become a blessing and the nations will call you blessed. And if somebody calls you blessed, don't say that I'm not blessed. You know, some of us sometimes we reach at a place and the devil tries to crush us. When they say who has something, you say I have nothing. The moment you declare that I have nothing when you have something, you have lost it. Somebody, you better understand what I'm talking about. The moment you say, I don't have, and you have it, you have lost it. So, you better declare. If people see that you are blessed, and they say, my brother, you are blessed. Say, amen. I am blessed. I am blessed. You cannot hide blessings, my friend. You cannot. The Bible says, I will bless you until the nations will call you blessed. So, I pray that when you are called blessed, accept the blessings of God. And therefore, you need to understand this is what God speaks to us. The Samaritan, the good Samaritan took responsibility of paying the, pay, the, the bill for hospital. He never prayed for that man. Father, in the name of Jesus, open the doors for finances. Uh, you may release finances, send finances from heaven so that this man might pay the bill in hospital. No. Sometime you must act but not pray. Prayer is good. It's a key that is needed in the vineyard of God. But we have places in life that you need to act on them by using other keys that Jesus gave to you. The Bible says, I have given you the keys in plural, not a key in single. He said, I have given you keys. In other words, this key, you must use this one to do this. Use this one to do that. And therefore, giving is another key that opens the doors for the giver. I pray for you that God may open your doors as a giver in Jesus' name. So he paid the hospital bill. His love and compassion led him to understand the need of the man. If you have the love of Christ, the compassion of Christ, you will be able to see the needs of others in life. And this one will help you to take responsibility. And responsibility is the burden to see the need in other people's lives and act on them. That is what we call responsibility. I pray that we must be ministers of responsibility. This is very important. Then when you read Colossians chapter 1 verse number 27 uh, to 29, Apostle Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, the Bible says he desires to present every man perfect to Jesus Christ. He wanted to represent every man complete to Jesus Christ. And this is done when somebody is ready to take responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to pray with you. I know that God has blessed you. And if you feel that you are blessed indeed, you can praise, share that message with your friend, share with your brother, and also put it to other platforms for other people of God to, to dine on that same bread. You know, the word of God is new day by day. It is powerful day by day. It is light unto our path day by day. It is very important. The Bible says and Paul told Timothy, I am entrusting to you these things that I'm teaching you that you must also entrust them to able men who can also trust it to others. So I want to pray for you. If I have entrusted to you, may also entrust it to others by passing it on. Share this and God will bless you so much. Things that will make your ministry to be effective. I have said in number one, we must walk in love. Love your God with all your heart, with all your, your soul, with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Number two, I have said, you must have compassion. Jesus healed many, delivered many, saved many. Why? He was moved by compassion. Number three, what will grow your ministry? Understanding. It is very important. If you are understanding, you will never be judgmental. Judgmental has made many people to run away from God. But I want to tell 
somebody, I want to talk to somebody, I want to encourage somebody. Understanding is what Jesus did when he understood the problem of the people, he solved the problem. It is time. Let us not point fingers. Let us bring solution to problems. The Bible says we've been called as the ministers of reconciliation. We must reconcile one with another. It is not my responsibility to sow discord among the brethren. The Bible says anyone who causes this young one to lose the kingdom, he is worthy to be tied with a stone and be thrown into the sea. But that is not what is going to happen to you. I pray that you shall be a blessing to somebody. Then finally, take responsibility in your ministry. And also you can go to our YouTube, The Standard of Living Church International. And remember to subscribe and also press the bell in order for you to be notified when we post other videos. And God will bless you so much. On my Facebook as well, you can reach me out to Dingili Bernard Ludondo. That Dingili, Dingili Bernard Ludondo. That is the Facebook you can reach me to. Or Bernard Isambe Dingili. You can as well take it and you reach it to me. We have also our Facebook page, The Standard of Living Church International. Standard of Living Church International on Facebook. You shall find us. There is another group there, the Standard of Living Church. And God will bless you so much. Tomorrow as you go to the place of work, I want to pray for you. May God bless you. If you have something that is burning in your heart, feel free. We have the numbers on your screen. You can use them to contact me on WhatsApp. Or you can write to me in my inbox on Facebook. And by the because of the love of Christ, I will act on it and answer you out your request and pray for you and God of heaven will do the rest because we are here serving him according to Amos chapter 3 verse 7 the Bible says and God reveals his secret to his servants the prophet so he want to do something here he gives the revelation to the servants the prophet I love you with the love of Jesus let us pray father in the name of Jesus I pray for my viewers bless them increase their borders and their boundary they may continue loving one another, having compassion. They may also understand one another and take responsibility for their ministry to grow. I pray for all the people of God, sons and daughters, ministers, pastors, bishops, apostles, evangelists, teachers. My Father, you may touch them, the prophets. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. I love you with the love of Jesus. If you have uh, your offering and you want to send it, uh, there are places there on the screen you have the numbers passing by 0725749484 and God will bless you so much God bless you and have a blessed evening I love you thank you and a blessed week ahead Amen <laughs>